Hi everybody, welcome to another painting session. Today we're going to paint, or try to paint, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint this painting that I call Kill or Be Killed. As you know, I have a lot of undertones into my work, so I'm a little bit dark, but you know what? Let's get with this thing. I haven't really prepped it yet, but we're going to go, sh we're going to go ahead and show you how I did this on an on a edge gallery wrap. Now these are heavy duty gallery wraps. They're pretty thick. As you can see, they're a lot different than a standard canvas. This is what you'll be getting on my website here. Only the top quality. Look at the thickness of this canvas. It's pretty heavy too. Damn. And I never throw plastic away. I'm going to keep that plastic because I do stuff with that. I do stippling with it and I do all kinds of things. Okay, so this is a real thick heavy duty canvas, man. This is ridiculous. Okay, so... <clears throat> Even though they pre gesso these things, I'm going to add more gesso to it anyway. That's what I like to do. I mean, it's thick. It's pretty heavy duty, but I can't do textures and all that without it. So I'm going to put a little bit on there just to make me feel better. Okay. There we go. Just enough. It's not, not a lot. Just to help me spread that color around. We'll get this out of the way now. And what I'm going to do is get a, a brush or a roller or whatever. Just one inch brush, kind of scoot it around. Kind of scoot it around, get some texture going on there. Now, this gesso is fairly thin, but it, it, it'll do what I need it to do. Yeah, let's kind of just put some of the It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to cover the whole canvas. It's just enough to give me some interesting texture here and there. Like I said, they really lay on the gesso when they do these canvases anyhow. I use a couple, couple of different brands, but I like to go to the edge. I like to go to the edge. Because I'm edgy. Anyways, like I said, just kind of one nice interesting texture there. And, you know, the thicker the texture, the longer it'll take to dry, so keep that in mind. And, you know, let's pick out these hairs here. Hairs in the air. Just some hair and some air. Okay. And they look, they look a little unattractive, but then at the same time, you know, if you get a hair in there, not a big deal. This means an artist did it. Not a mechanical piece, it's a, painted by an artist. Look for the hair sometime. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of blend it out, kind of give it a little bit of a texture there. Not too much, just a little bit. Okay, I'll set this little roller here there for now. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some yellow in a couple places. I'm kind of making a pattern right now at this point. And we'll work with that. <clears throat> Let's get that out of the way now. And now we're going to go with a little bit darker yellow-orange. Let's get it over here. Kind of look for those little negative areas that I didn't get. You want all that in there like that. Okay, get that out of the way. Put the piece there. Okay, that's pretty good. Let me see. Maybe up here. Maybe a little bit up there. And maybe a little bit right there. That's the fun part. You just kind of feel it. Okay. Now what I need is a little bit of orange. Because I need to kind of make it like a three-tone deal. Kind of offset some of those. You want contrast. Just kind of randomly hit it where you see empty spots where you think you might need some. Look at that, see? Hi guys, sorry about that. I had a little bit uh, interruption here, but we're going to finish this off here. Okay, like I said, I got thrown off track, but I'll try to get back in key here. So what you're trying to do is spread these tones out. You know, nothing's perfect. You just kind of kind of make a nice interesting pattern. You want to fill the edges, of course. You want the empty spots. And, it, you know, like I said, so we're looking at a nice interesting uh, textures here. A couple of spots like that. 
I mean, right now, as it sits, it's pretty cool. It's not quite saying killer bee yet. So we're gonna keep messing with it till it says killer bee. Okay, so I like that. It's a little orange than I'd like it to be. That's okay though. We're gonna throw some other tone in there. So I need, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown. There's a little bit of brown in a bee sometimes. You don't really see it, but it's there. This will help with contrast. Not too much dark. We don't want too dark in there. We're still going to have black in a lot because bees have black in them too. Okay, so remember, you don't want to hit your colors too much because you want to blend. Yeah, it looks, it's just looking pretty good. Right now it's just abstract, you know, it's kind of just meaningless in a sense. Now we got to, you got to put that feeling into it. This is where the artistic part comes in. You know, you've really got to start feeling this B abstract. There's a lot more things going on here. Okay, let me just get a little bit more brown right in this corner. A little bit darker there. Let's see. There we go. That, a little hit there. You gotta kind of feel it. Okay, so now it's got a lot of busy colors going on, kind of abstract movement going on, but we're gonna do some other things to make that even more bee-like. Like I said, it's like give, you know, you give some, you take away, you give some, take away. We're gonna use this comb here. This is a catalyst tool, it's rubbery. Got it from Jerry's, you can buy it from different places. So what I'm going to do is give it that B feel, you know, like, you know, see so like that? I'm just going to kind of, let's check this one out, see if it's going to work. Yeah, you know what? I don't like that one. Let's go with a little thicker one. That's why you got to experiment. You got to try to figure out which comb is going to work. Here's another one. It's a little wider. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I like that. Got kind of, kind of a B feel. Look at that. Like that, see it's got kind of a bee feel now. Liking that a lot. And we're gonna cover a lot of that up anyway, so. But see, it kind of had that, that vibration of an insect. You gotta kind of feel, what does a bee feel like? Feels like shit, just like me. I'm sorry about the cussing. Let's just try to keep it PG. Okay. So we got that going on, it's all busy. Busy bee. That's what I can call it right now. I can just end it right now and call it Busy Bee. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put more shots of yellow on there. I wanna kinda get that yellow going a little stronger in some areas. Gonna make it a little bit more strengthy with the yellow. Strengthy, is that a word? Strengthy. Strengthy. Just want a little bit more yellow in there. Squeeze that beautiful bean footage. Okay. That's good. A little bit more yellow. That's kind of what I want. Oh, I'm over here. Oh, okay. I'm trying to find a nice balance with this yellow. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and smooth it out with the tool. Just kind of leave it, just touch it like so it kind of blends in. It builds up that thick on thin kind of feel. That's what you want, that thick on thin. And it causes an, another erratic movement. There we go. Like right now, that's really cool, but we're not, we're going to mess it up now, guys. So what I'm going to do now, this is going to be crazy, going to be crazy. It could work, it could fall apart, it could be a disaster, but we're going to try because that's what art's all about. It's going to heat it up just a little bit.
Okay, normally you'd let that sit overnight. I'm doing this fast for video purposes, and that's why I'm saying it could be a disaster. Because you really do want it to dry. But it doesn't matter because it's all going to come out good. So be positive. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start doing some masking. So here's where the crazy part is. Masking tape. Yeah, this masking tape, I got it cheap, so it has a few cuts in it. Uh, see where there's a couple cuts? Not a big deal. Just lay down. Lay it down. And just kind of remember, it's not going to really stick to really good to wet paint, but it will stick enough to get what you need. It works better if you let it dry. Keep that in mind. But uh, not a big deal. But it's, it's not a deal breaker. It's just gonna come off a little easier sometimes. Remember, don't lead anything out of your corners. You can kind of go to a corner, just don't lead anything out of a corner directly. Crazy. Told you we're gonna get crazy. I told you this. Cool. We're getting there. Golly, that's so cool. See, it kind of got like a, kind of a powdery, shattered. I'm not sure what we're going to do here. Got kind of a shattery thing. That's what we're going to do on the next one, too. But right now, we're just trying to get this kind of going where we want it. Okay, so that's the size of tape I'm going to use right now. At this point, I'm going to use some other tape. So, a little bit thicker. So, we're going to go with this. Thicker tape. I don't know how thick this is, about what, two inches? Probably two. If I can get it going here. My hands are full of paint. Oh my goodness. Get this tape rolling here. Yeah. Wow. Can you see that? It just ripped on me. Went on trash. I don't know if we're going to be able to use the tape or not. Let's see what's going on with it. Really good quality tape, it just you gotta be kind of careful. Okay. Well just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of cut the end, scissors, make sure it's straight. Make it kind of square. That way it's kind of like a, see like this piece right here? It's kind of like that. So that square kind of ends up there. And we'll get another piece. And we'll do the same thing. We'll cut that nice and square. Hope you guys are watching this. Do or die time here. Or is it kill or be killed? Oh, jeez. Okay, not a biggie. Don't sweat it. Just, I don't want to get all nervous. There we go. Let's put a piece there. It's all good. This tape just rips so easy. Like I said, I bought some tape, and uh, somebody sliced it, and so sometimes it breaks where I don't want it. Not good, people. I won't buy from that vendor again. So, he was doing really good for me for a while, and then he got all sloppy on me. Like I said, don't leave it directly out of a corner. You want it? Make some nice cool lines, but okay, so maybe one more in that corner up there. And, huh. Okay, I have techniques that I do for both of these, but that's okay. We'll talk about that later. Stick the gas tape. 
Okay, right about here we'll just do like a little, there we go. Okay, to get it with that thick tape, now we're going to go with a little bit of thinner tape. I know it sounds weird, but we're going to go with the thinner tape now. And you said, Mark, I didn't know you can go thinner. Well, yeah, you can. You can go way thinner. We're going to go super thin. Like, this is stuff you use for pinstriping on a car almost. Automotive stuff. And we'll just kind of lay it on there. I like I said, we'll just kind of do that. Anywhere we see fit. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Yeah, just let it lay there. Don't worry about it. Wow, oh, this looks crazy, don't it, people? Because it is crazy. Oops. Well, that didn't stick really good, so let's do it again. Okay. Now we'll do a little crisscross there. Okay, so that's what we want. We want it all busy in four different dimensions and shape. That's what we want, people. Okay, so there's a reason to rhyme for all this. Let's show you why now. And I just make these up as I go, people, so I don't know what I'm going to get. It's a surprise to me as well, but I just feel these things in my mind. And I feel something and I just go with what I feel. So we're going to do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get some brown paint and squeeze it on this brush. And I'm just going to hit it here and here. I want these overlapping dark areas here. Crisscrosses. Go over that tape. Checking me out here, guys. Okay, keep your eye on the prize. Just gonna wash my brush off or dry it off a little bit. And we're gonna get this uh, darker yellow. I'm gonna try to get, squeeze it right from the pump here. It might be almost impossible, but we're gonna try it. I don't wanna put it on a dish. Just blob it on there. Just blob it on there. Crazy, huh? That's how we do abstracts, my friends. We feel that. And you got those little annotations of a bee there. You can kind of a bee feel. Well, that's what it feels like to me, anyway. Okay, so now we got that going that way. Now we got too many verticals, so now we're going to freshen it up a little bit more with some brighter yellow. Okay. So we're going to try to do the same thing. Get this brush all... Clean off a little bit. Squeeze that bright yellow. This is the B color. Ooh, pretty. And we're gonna go more this way with it, more horizontal. Want it busy like a bee.
Busy like a bee. Busy like a bee. Wasn't that a same like, oh yeah, it was Muhammad Ali. I don't know, something like that. Sting like a butterfly or float like a butterfly or something like that. Sting like a bee. Well, we're giving you something. Bee-ish. Bee-ish? That's not a cussy. Oh well. Okay. Okay, we're liking that. We gotta get a lot of yellow in there. A little strong. You wanna put these uh, strong notes down with yellow. Okay. I think that's enough yellow. Okay, now we're gonna add a little bit of black and a white, because as you guys know, with black and white, that pulls out the contrast. So, we'll start with black first, since it's more powerful. And bees have a lot of black in them, so this is where it should start to really start happening. And so it's gonna be darker than the brown we just set in. But you wanna use it wisely. Don't get all crazy with it. Because we're gonna do some other stuff here with the block. We don't want it too uh, too crazy. Okay, so that's actually all the block I want to put in it. I don't want to, I don't want to get too crazy with the block. I'll show you why here in a minute. As you know, I use color psychology in my work, and I'll talk about that here in a second as well. Now we're gonna pop some white in there. Wow, that's really bright white. I like that. That's going to really pop everything there. Oh, really fresh. That was kind of... And if it hits a yellow, it's going to make it brighter. We just don't want to dirty the color too much. So you start getting it gray like that, wipe your brush off. Don't want your color getting all nasty. Hit light and go. Right now you're kind of building up those whites. See how I just hit and go? Look at that, see? Okay, I'm liking that. See how busy that is? Okay, so now we got that going on, and now what I was going to talk about, I have two little bottles. That I filled up over here. Now, the reason I'm saying color psychology because black represents like death. But we're gonna do this, okay? Oops, I forgot to cut the end off of this. Let's cut it off. Okay. Snip, snip. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Black represents like a death note. Okay. But I'll, and, and that's why I kind of did what I did with this particular thing. And then red, of course, represents blood. That's also where I got the word killer be killed. So that's the name of this painting. You know, I, I titled it, you know, like kill or be killed. But it has kind of an under, uh, under notion of be. It's kind of like a be feel. And I'll just kind of do this. Give it that. Blood feel. Okay, I'm not done yet. Okay, that's enough red in there. I don't want too much red, but let's get the corners a little bit, a little bit there, a little bit there. Okay, I don't want too much red in there, but we're gonna do something here. We're gonna get that <clears throat> that plastic that we got on the canvas. We're just kind of lightly smash down that red and black. It just flattens it out a little bit. And we're gonna, we don't care if the tape comes off. But we do in a way. I want to be careful how we take it off. So let me get rid of this plastic. Throw it in the trash. And now it's reveal time. It's reveal time. Let's get rid of some of this stuff so we won't have a happy accident here. Okay. And let me see. I'm kind of liking everything. 
that's what I wanted. And I'm gonna get it hair dry just a wee bit. All right, guys, it's reveal time. We're gonna throw this in a bucket of water. And we're gonna carefully pick off this tape best we can. Not a big deal if it drops on it or whatnot. We're just trying to get an interesting abstractable pattern. Is that a word? Of course, we want to be a little careful. Oh, okay. Let's get the top on here. Let's get some scissors out going. Let's get some scissors going. This can get messy. Like I said, you want to be patient with this and you want to do it when it's drying. You don't want to try to do it. You don't want to try to pull this off unless it dries. I'm doing this fast because of the video. The video. For the video. It's real messy. I'm trying to get all this paint off my hand here. Pull it outward. situation. Let's try my hand here. Okay, see any paint, any tape left? I don't see any. I think we did a wonderful job. There you go, guys. It's done. Isn't that cool as heck? It's got a feeling of killer bees in it. The blood, like I said, I used, you know, just as a reference of blood and fighting in the dark. Death, killer bee kill, lots of yellows and oranges. Looks like bees all fighting and mingling. A lot of the tool here represents the stripes of the bee. All the zigzags just remind you of the motion. And hopefully you guys like that piece. Anyways, it'll be on my website. And go check it out if you get a chance. It'll be for sale. And thanks for watching, guys. Fultz Fine Art, guys. Boom!